Hey friends in your home groups, I hope you guys are enjoying each other's uh, company. I know I've talked to some uh, home group leaders and it's just been great. I know to be able to get back together and to worship God and encourage each other. And um, for sure, the Lord has done some unique work over the last couple of months. And I uh, do pray that your time together over the summer is encouraging. Uh, you know, I think right now there's just so much fo focus on the power of man and um, who has power, who has the authority, um, who can who can get what they want done, done, um, who, who lives in the place of influence. And yet, you know, I, I think that the world really needs right now, not just empowered people, but empowered Christians. And uh, I, you know, I've said this over the last couple of weeks that it's just important for us to recognize the place that God has us in as the church and the influence that we're supposed to be because as our world is walking through um, different crises and as there are so many people struggling with so many different things, the church has the answer. You know, while the government may see us as non-essential, uh, while leaders uh, in positions of power may think of us as unnecessary, which for sure some of them do, we know that that's not the way that God sees it. We know that we, because of Christ living through us, we are the ones who are able to step in, listen, with the power of God and really make a difference. Because it's the power of God that transforms and changes people's lives. And if you know the church didn't believe this, listen, the church would have gone nowhere in the first century. Like if the church really didn't believe that it had something to offer the culture, there would have been no church planting. There would have been no mission work. You know, you look at the the lives of the 11 apostles and what they did, uh, going to India, going to Asia, going to Asia Minor, modern day Turkey, going into Macedonia, going to Rome, going to Spain. Like, I mean, there was this desire, right, to, to spread the gospel. And there's no doubt that that was a obedience to the command of Christ, right? You're gonna be Acts 1.8, my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. But it wasn't just because they were just being obedient to a command. They like literally believed. They had something to offer the world. And that's the whole point of that verse, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Wait in Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Then you will be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. Look, they weren't witnesses of an institution. They weren't just witnesses of propositional truth. They were witnesses to Christ. And their witness wasn't something that was just a one-time event. It was a lifestyle. It was a lifestyle. Sometimes we boil down witness, witnessing or being a witness to a single event, to a moment of time, to an interaction that we have with somebody that we hope when we get to that point, we'll have the strength to be able to convey what we should convey boldly. And I'm not saying that witnessing isn't that. It is sometimes that, but it's not just that. Witness, to be a witness means that you're living a lifestyle. It's a, it's a way of life that requires the continual power of God's Holy Spirit. It produces within us a boldness. It produces within us a lifestyle, like I said, that expresses a story. And what is the story? That we have a living relationship with God the Father through the Son. That He has transformed and changed our lives and our lives are now hidden with Christ in God. And look, you can't separate that out uh, like it's a category in your life. If you're really living the uh, empowered life, Jesus isn't just one of your life categories. He's not a segment, he's not a part. He is and has influenced every part of your life. You can't just take him out. I remember when I got saved, when I put my faith in Christ, like I, I couldn't stop talking about Jesus. And it's the same for me now, some 20 plus years later. Why? Because he's influenced my life. I can't imagine my life without him. And, and that happens when we're living under the power and the influence of God's Holy Spirit. And God adorns 
that Spirit-empowered life with the fruit of the Spirit and with the gifts of the Spirit. And that makes us unique. It makes us different. We're not just Christians in a religious sense. We're people who are living a robust, vibrant relationship with God that is on display for all to see, albeit that that's unique to each one of us. Nevertheless, it is evident to all. And I'm just saying to you today, that's what the world needs. I know, look, there are all sorts of ways to solve the problems that the world is confronted with right now. And I'm not saying that some of the things that we need to do um, aren't good. They, they are good. But I am saying to you today that the main thing that needs to happen is that Christians need to rise up, empowered by the Spirit of God, living as witnesses. In other words, willing to live and to die for the truth of God's Word and for the person of Jesus Christ. May God bless you guys with that conversation tonight. May there be a mutual encouragement that you have with each other as we continually provoke each other to good works and to be a light in the midst of this dark world. God bless you.